right, starting on slide nine, let's go ahead and resume. So now let's talk about the generalized steps to uh, design a recursive algorithm. So as I mentioned, uh, there are two things you need for a recursive algorithm, and you may have picked up on them. There are, you need the base case, which is the simple small val the s simple case of a problem, like what we had with factorial, such as if the, you know, if we get zero factorial or one factorial, that's super easy for us to compute, it takes no effort on our part, so we just return one. It's a base case, something simple that requires no effort whatsoever. Okay, the other case we need for a recursive problem is that we need a recursive case, something of size n that can be reduced into a simpler version of itself. So we're going to take a problem like n factorial and we'll reduce it into n times n minus 1 factorial. So we took it, we took the problem and reduced it into something simpler, which is instead of n factorial, instead of 5 factorial for instance, we have 5 times 4 factorial because 4 factorial is just a little bit easier to produce for us. And 4 factorial, we'll change that into 4 times 3 factorial and so on and so forth. Now each of those cases need to make progress in the direction towards the base case, which is kind of implied, but it, we should say that explicitly, right? And at the end, all these things combine into one big, uh, one, one case. So the strategy for designing these recursive steps is to identify this base case first, then design, then design the recursive case. Then you need to uh, verify those, right? They say to identify the base case and solve it directly. Devise a strategy to make the problem smaller, right? So create your base case, create your recursive case, and then figure out how to put them together. So the first thing we're going to look at is the recursive algorithm for finding a length of a string, right? Um, uh, by which they mean, let's see, sorry. So by which they mean, of course, we are going to, you know, figure out a string, how big a string is. So I'll go ahead and write that here, public, static, void, main, and don't worry, and yes, I kind of skipped through that slide. Um, so if the string is empty, it has no characters. So the strategy they have is the string is empty, it has no character, length is zero. Else, the length is one plus the length of the string that excludes that first character. So I'm going to explain that in a bit more detail. Um, so public static int because we're calculating the length of a string. A and yes, so this is what I call one of those make work examples because of, of course the simple solution for, for, for this is to return s dot length. Right? But this is just an example that we're going to solve recursively so that we can view it, so we can get into the habit of thinking how do we solve something recursively. Okay? So, first let's identify our base case. How can I figure out how, uh, what the length of, right? Um, assume we can't, you know, just look at the length of a string to figure out how big it is. Right? That means that in order to figure out how big it is, I have to count the number of characters that there are in there, right? And so the recursive line of thought is, that's, I, is that you're pretty lazy. What's the easiest case for me to count, right? And you might think, okay, if it's, one, if it's one thing long, but I still have to count something there, right? If it's one character long, you still have to count that one character. So what's even easier than that? And that is if s is equal to the empty string. If so if f s dot equals the empty string, then that's a complete, then we know what the length of the empty string is. It's always zero, right? The empty string will be our base case, okay? So now we need to solve this problem recursively, right? And so we need to take the problem of figuring how, how long the string is and break it down into an easier case. So if it's not zero, right, if it's not the empty string, that means there's something in the string we have to count. And again, counting is something that's hard and boring and I don't want to do it. But what I can do is say, hey, well, there's at least one thing in there, right? I know there's at least a, if it's not the empty string, I know there's at least a character in there, right? So it's at least one character long. And then I'll just calculate the length of that string minus the first character. So substring beginning at index one, right? We'll calculate the length of the string uh, that begins at eight, you know, beyond that point. So here we can calculate the length of hello. We'll go ahead and run it. 
and it will calculate 5. Okay? Right? And how does that work? Well, rather than working through, hello, I'll do a slightly shorter example. I will work through um, food, right? Uh, by which, uh, and I, I don't mean I'll eat food. I mean I'll work through the example with the word food, right? I want to figure out the length of food. Um, now, how long is food, right? Well, it's not an empty string, so we know it's at least, so it's not zero characters long. How long is it? Well, it's, um, it's, you know, it's, well, it's one plus some other amount. It's one plus the length of, it's, so let's go ahead and actually do this. Length of food. Well, it's one because it's at least not the empty string. So it's one plus length of OOD, right? We knew that there was at least one character in the front of it. So we're going to count that first character and then figure out the length of OOD. And the length of OOD, well, that's, well, it's not in the empty string. So its length is one plus the length of odd. Right? And that in turn, well, the length of odd, that's one plus the length of D. And then we've got, and so that will be one plus the length. Assuming I can t spell, right? The length of empty string. And what is the length of empty string? It will be zero. So just to make sure you get this, right? We call length with, and we pass in food. And that in turn calls the same function and it passes in ood, which in turn calls the same function and passes in odd, which in turn calls the same function and passes in d, which in turn calls the same function and passes in the empty string. And so the empty string returns zero. So we know that this is zero. So we know that the length of d is actually uh, one. And one plus one, well, that will be equal to two. So we know that the length of this is actually two. So two plus one is equal to three. So the length of ood is three. And the length of food, that would say, well, that's equal to four plus one. Or sorry, three plus one, which would be four. So we pass back four for the, for the length of food. And so that's how that recursive call works. That's how we write it. So this is how this works, right? It figures out, OK, so it's the length of food. That's the length of 1 plus ood. And that's the length of 1 plus od, right? So it just keeps calling a smaller and smaller and smaller string. And basically, we're just adding one together for each time we call it. All right, so we'll move on to the next example.